And here we are. Good morning, everyone. My name is Paco, and this is Coffee and Headlines. It is Sunday, April 19, and uh, we are meeting here once again, um, going through some of the latest headlines that I gather on my daily perusal of news and what's going on around our world. And we share them over a cup of coffee and um, check in with one another, make sure that everybody's doing okay. Good morning, Gail. It's good to see you. And it's good to see anybody that has been here before. If you're new to these broadcasts, feel free to chime in. Feel free to let us know where you are. Feel free to let us know that you're new here and write the word new in your comments so that we can give you the proper, a proper welcome. <clears throat> Today, as I promised yesterday, we're going to take a big chunk of, of the program into exploring the pros and cons of whether it's okay to walk outside for physical health, for mental health. Um, as we move forward, as we traverse together through this new world or this new normal, we're all discovering together what the new guidelines are, how they affect our personal lives, how easy, easily can we all adapt to what is expected of us by health officials and so forth and so on. So we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that. Um, we're going to say hello to Kathleen, of course. We're going to say hello to Candace. Candace, it's always good to see you. And Michal, it's also good to see you as well. I'm going to dive into the news first because there's some really funny things going on here. Um, and I suppose you have to have a sense of humor. Uh, without further ado, I let you know that there is now such a thing as a movie called Corona Zombies. And um, I've seen the trailer and it's terrible. It is so, so, so bad. But it's probably, as The Guardian says, the it, it, they call it the terrible movie we might just need right now. Uh, this is something that was probably put together from splicing and editing um, bad footage to begin with. Um, this is a production of a company called Full Moon Features. In, and they say in the, that in the movie, uh, there's ditzy damsels in distress, toilet paper famine, inept world leaders, mass media going wild, a virus from hell, and hordes of ghouls hungry for human flesh combined in Full Moon's maniacal horror comedy hybrid, Corona Zombies. Um, the premise of the movie, and yes, I'm going to give you the YouTube link for the trailer. I'm not going to play it because I've discovered that YouTube doesn't like it when I do that. Uh, but apparently the movie starts when things go array at the, get this, at the Scambells, not Campbell's, but Scambell's factory soup, uh, soup factory in China. And um, the, the soup goes bad and all kinds of really bad things happen. But it is it is definitely something to <laughs> to watch. I don't know. I may I may watch it. I may find it. I may rent it. It may just be the kind of laughter that I need. Um, although I don't particularly like horror movies. Then I have this other headline: um, wild animals, bears, coyotes, wild boars have been spotted roaming through the streets in Monterrey, north of the country. Um, I love these news items that have to do with animals reclaiming their own territory. Um, there's something wrong, but something right about the fact that this is what's going on. I just, I'm happy to see them out and about. And I am also happy to report that the fundraiser we announced yesterday, organized by Paul Christ, look at this. They're up to $3,370 of a $10,000 goal, and this is just in a couple of days. I certainly hope that some of these donations came from some of you who uh, take the time to spend some time with me every morning. Um, if not, I'm going to put the link in the show notes again so that we can all find a way to support this uh, this cause. I am sure that there are many others out there. This is the one that, uh, that I'm mentioning, but I'll be happy to mention any other efforts that anybody wants to share with us as we move forward. Um, Vicky, it's good to see you. Margaret Parrish, how are you, Margaret? It's so great to see that you're here. Welcome aboard. Um, 
David Dunphy says it's similar that Sharknado. Well, yes, there's there's a whole subgenre of uh, exploitation movies out there, and they have their fans. Um, I used to watch uh, Sharknado movies with a good friend of mine. Um, of course, I needed a I needed brownies to put them together. I wanted to show you. Oops, I wanted to show you this because brownie mix has been in short supply at supermarket but finally i was able to find a box so maybe i'll make brownies and maybe just maybe i'll make them happy i'm not saying that i do that but maybe just maybe i might make them happy and maybe i will watch this silly movie um of course there are corona zombies i mean just look at us just look at me i haven't shaved in two days i feel like a zombie marge it's nice to see you anyhow let's let's get into the subject at hand because this is something that um that is important to me and and and, and something dawned on me this morning as i was getting ready to get together with you and, and drink my coffee we're all travelers through this strange new world that that we're discovering and we're paying attention to the guidelines. We know what the guidelines are. We know there's such a thing as a certain amount of risk um, in everything or many things that we do. We know that some people are going to be more bound to take risks. We know that some people are going to be critical of it. So where do we feel comfortable about something as seemingly simple as going out for a walk <clears throat> for mental health, for exercise, for change of pace, for clearing, for whatever reason. So this is what I did. Yesterday, I went and Googled phrases like, is it okay to walk slash coronavirus, uh, coronavirus uh, health exercise guidelines, so forth and so on. So I found a dozen websites that had pertinent information and I put them in the order in which the articles were published and I did all my homework for you and um, pulled out the key points from each one of them. And this is what I found. We start with Slate Magazine. Slate Magazine back on March 18 published an article, is it um, go for a walk, as simple as that. And what did I take out of that article? Well, some of the basic stuff. Uh, they say you are allowed, it will help as long as you stay six feet apart from others. Um, they suggest listening to songs that remind you of summer vacation or maybe uh, audio audiobooks. Make phone calls, you know, take the time to walk outside to connect with people that you love. Um, you can walk with a friend, just stay six feet apart from each other. And obviously, if you are officially quarantined or if you are sick, you should stay inside. After that, I looked at BBC News, how to go for a walk safely without getting shamed. How interesting to see that this comes from um, England, United Kingdom. Getting shamed is something that weights heavily in some cultures, and it is happening. Just look at Facebook. Anyhow, the BBC News, did I just skip a slide? The BBC News, oh, there are my key points. Um, Acknowledges um, quarantine shaming, sorry for the typo, um, and but they say that the official advice can be confusing, and I totally agree. They say stay inside versus keep exercising is confusing for many. Um, the article goes on and quotes authorities from New York City, United Kingdom, Seattle, and Las Vegas, very much like I am quoting um, different sources right now. Uh, they suggest you walk by yourself or with your dog. Then I jumped over to CBS this morning. Can I walk outside? Is the virus on my shoes? And other corona questions answered. This was an actual video that I saw. It was a Q&A with experts from LA, New York City, and Long Island, although the article is outlined in its entirety. Um, this article says it is okay to go outside. In fact, a UV sunlight does degrade the virus. But again, you need to maintain social distance. Um, somebody asked, can you pick up the virus on your shoes? And uh, the answer the expert gave is not likely. Then we move on to uh, Refinery29, which is a publication by Vice. 
And um, the question or the topic of this article is running outside during coronavirus. I looked at it because, you know, running and, psych and, and walking is pretty similar. And what they said is that, well, this was published April 1st because that was National Walking Day in the U.S. Again, they bring, they bring up social distancing, staying six feet apart from others. Um, technically okay to go out for limited exercise, at least for now. And that's an important point to take in mind, to keep in mind. A lot of these guidelines are changing on a daily basis. And in fact, as I was looking at some of these articles, some of the articles said that they had been updated. Um, this article reminds us that the disease spreads through droplets that are resulting from coughing or sneezing or breathing near someone who has it. So group jogs or walks should be avoided. And of course, as you're out and about, you want to avoid touching surfaces and you want to wash your hands upon return. Boston Magazine, in their City Life section, uh, has a, an article titled, Yes, It's Probably Safe to Keep Going on Walks Outside. And this was written by a reporter on a first-person basis. Uh, she was expressing her own concerns and fears. And the article says, it's probably fine, but it does not mean it's zero risk. Um, there's always risks involved. There is no such thing as a fail-proof solution to this, um, but it was an interesting read as well. Um, the New York Times put out rules for using the sidewalk during the coronavirus on April 5th. And the article touches base on some interesting things, not walking in the middle of the sidewalk, for example, not strolling with your face glued to your phone, which contradicts the other article we have looked at previously, no spitting, like I would be caught dead spitting in public. Hello, who spits in public anymore? Anyhow, um, six feet away from people on the sidewalk, move out of the way when passing someone, even if it means getting off the sidewalk and go early in the morning or late evening when there are less people. And this business of moving out of the way, I think is a really important business because it falls in in this category of habits that we have. You know, let's say that this is a sidewalk and there's one person going this way and you're walking next to that person or maybe behind, you know, what we usually do is this, we just pass a person. But what is expected of us now is that as we're approaching somebody we have to go around them and keep walking. And just as I'm having a hard time coordinating my move here, you know, we don't think to do that as we're walking past other people. Well, current guidelines call for us to learning this new skill in which if you're going to be walking, certainly if you're jogging, um, we want to be mindful of other people as, as we walk past them. Uh, finally, this article says going early in the morning or late evening when there are less people. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, moving on, Idea Stream, which is a publication out of Ohio's PBS uh, affiliate, um, asks the question again, can I go for a walk? And their answers are, are very similar to what we've seen before. Going outside in uncrowded areas is fine. Staying inside is the safest six feet away from others, um, don't touch anything, wash your hands if you do, um, limit contact to just the people you live with, and practice social distancing measures. Do all these articles start to sound alike? Absolutely, but it, I felt it was important to go look for this information in different places. Vox tells us what are the rules of social distancing, published April 9. <clears throat> and some of the things that they talk about are important. They bring up the ethics of social distancing. And um, and let me pause here for a second. And this is a, just commentary. There's There are all these people that are shaming other people for going outside. There are all these people that are shaming others for doing things they're not supposed to be doing. And this article is important because it talks about the ethics of isolation. Think about this for a second. And this is this is thought provoking. If I stay at home and order my goods, my chocolate, my groceries delivered home by another person. Of course, I'm doing the responsible thing because I am staying home. I'm protecting myself. 
but where is it ethically correct that another person should risk their lives to make sure that I stay safe? And I'm not talking about doctors. Doctors have a pledge. Um, they signed up for this kind of thing. But uh, for all the people that are very inclined to say, well, you shouldn't be walking outside because it's not the right thing to do, think about the ethical aspects of the people that we expect to bring us things home. Anyhow, it's something that is worth many, many conversations. The article goes on and talks again about hand washing, good hygiene, uh, wash your hands before you go and after. It also mentions peak hours for exercise. Then uh, Make It, which is a CNBC publication, says uh, how to stay safe when people are breathing heavy while running, walking outside amid coronavirus pandemic. This published on April 15. And again, they say, you know, the answer is complicated. Some of the safest activities, um, that they say that walking is among the safest activities if you follow social distancing guidelines. Uh, germs dissipate really quickly outdoors. It talks again about social distancing, wearing a face covering, which may not even be a matter of choice anymore, um, and um, run or walk solo, but be street smart. How to safely amid, how to run safely amid coronavirus concerns that came from Runner's World just a couple of days ago. Again, this is about running, not walking, but I figured it was relevant enough. Um, and it was specific about running. It says it is safe as long as you're alone. Plan your timing for less crowded trails and paths. Um, 30 to 60 minutes of moderate to brisk activity can help your immune system. And this is something we already knew. Uh, complementing it with at-home exercising. And of course, they bring up face masks. And an important point, the mask is not to protect you. It is to protect others from you. And if you do any reading about masks, this, is, this shouldn't be news items. This shouldn't be a new, a new item for us to consider. It's been said before. And last but not least, I found information coming from the World Health Organization about staying physically active during self-quarantine. Of course, the World Health Organization is not suggesting we go out. But the article is very helpful because it does say within your home, take short active breaks during the day. Uh, it suggests following an online exercise class, and there are many of those available. It suggests that you, we walk indoors, or if we go outside, we maintain a safe distance from other people if, if, you, if you do so. Um, it suggests standing up every 30 minutes, and of course, doing meditation is always a good idea. And this is the information that I found. Let me take a look at some of your comments and reactions. I was taking a peek earlier, and some of you were really, really relevant to what we're talking about. Um, let's see. Um, Joey and Isaac from Gay Guy Vallarta, they're making brownies too. Good for you. I have a movie to recommend. It's called uh, Corona Zombies. <laughs> um Candace, speaking of sharing the love, how does one buy you a cup of coffee or two? Well, Candace, I am going to tell you and tell everybody else that cares uh, that I am good at helping others promote and I am the most horrible self-promoter. Um, it shouldn't be a, a mystery to you that I spend a lot of time and resources putting together these these daily broadcasts, putting together the information that I do. And like many others, I am also looking for ways in which I can continue to support myself through this um, pandemic and moving forward. I have set up a website uh, in at buymeacoffee, buymeacoffee.com. The link shows up in the show notes every single day at this website. You will have choices of buying me one cup of coffee for $3 or buying as many cups of coffee as you want. And you also have a choice to support these endeavors on an ongoing basis through a monthly or a yearly subscription. Some of you have already done that and I am extremely grateful for this. I will continue to um, re reach out for your support in, in, in ways that are more... See, I'm stuttering. I am that bad at saying, help me too. Um, 
but yes, I have a, a fundraising system. I will mention it again in the show notes. I will start acknowledging publicly those of you who have kindly uh, subscribed. I have a few subscribers now, yay. And I have a bunch of cups of coffee that have been purchased. So I am very, very grateful. Um, not for what you do for me, but for the fact that you allow me the privilege of being useful and helpful to you. So that is the very long, very awkward answer to your question. Um, Joey and Isaac from Gay Guide Vallarta mentioned up the Kuala River, it is very nice. Um, and not many people are there. Absolutely, I agree. The other day I went walking up the Kuala River um, because I needed to go away. I wanted to go into to go to nature and it felt absolutely wonderful. Um, good suggestion for March. If walking with a partner, please walk or run in single file. And of course, keeping distance from each other. That makes perfect sense. Um, David Dumphy reminds us, and I remember this so well, allergy season um, in Massachusetts. So sneezing might be an issue. I, it's so funny because I lived in Boston for 19 years and I had hay fever every year. And when I moved to Puerto Vallarta, I stopped suffering from allergies. Uh, so yes, this is absolutely correct. Anybody that has allergic reactions to pollen or other things, uh, that might be a difficult thing to achieve this time. Um, it is important to be careful and be aware of your surroundings in isolated areas. These are desperate times. Absolutely correct, Luis. Uh, there are a lot of people who don't have the best intentions out there. So going very early in the mountains might not be a good idea. Um, going very early on a city street, that might be, well, you know your neighborhoods. We all know our surroundings, but absolutely be super, super careful um, about when and where you choose to do this. Then Lars brings up a fundamental issue. Puerto Vallarta has not started issuing tickets. Yes, this is correct. Puerto Vallarta has not started issuing tickets and Puerto Vallarta has not started mandating for that matter, Mexico is not mandating. Mexico is requesting, it is suggesting, it is not mandating. Needless to say, the moment our government, our officials say you must stay home, then that means you must stay home. And I am mindful of the fact that by having this conversation, by having this um, dialogue, there might be some people out there that are already thinking, well, you know, Paco's giving bad advice, or that's not what the government is saying. You know, all that I'm doing here is putting the information out there so that we can all make informed decisions. But this point that Lars brings up is absolutely important. Christy, hello from San Francisco. Are people walking in San Francisco, Christy? I know that San Francisco is one of those areas where the guidelines expect you to truly stay home. It would be interesting if you'd share a comment with us about what's going on in your neighborhood. Um, Catherine, wearing a mask cuts down on breathing and allergens. Greetings from a fellow spring allergy sufferer. I hear you. I hear you. And I know Catherine, you, uh, Catherine has a dog. In fact, she has two dogs. Um, yes, two dogs. Um, so, you know, dog owners, you have to go out and exercise your dogs unless you have a beautiful yard for them to spend some time. And, um, and it is important to keep them self safe and keep them healthy as well. Um, Kathleen was wondering how you could pay me. Well, <laughs> again, I need to learn to be more in your face. Um, and that's part of my own learning. And, um, I'll put together a little, a little presentation. Uh, I promise I will do that. Um, thank you. Happy to support you. I enjoy these moments. You know, I enjoy them more than I thought I would. Um, I'm completely honest with you. But now I, I worry about having things to share. I have gone, gotten into this routine in which every afternoon I make sure that I have enough interesting things that I have found. And, and every morning I get up around 6.30 or 7. I start assembling the show notes. I start pulling things that I think will be interesting to you. And um, it is fun. And, and you know what the best thing of it is? Is that it is helping me learn new skills. I didn't know how to do this live streaming uh, 
a few months ago. I had dabbled in it by doing some live interviews last year. I did one with my friend Nina Goodhope. I did a couple of others when I was uh, doing consulting work with Encanto. Um, but this has allowed me to grow as a as a person, allowed me to grow as, as a human being. Uh, it keeps me healthy. It keeps me curious. It, and last but not least, it keeps me connected. Um, you know this, and this is not the, the pity Paco moment, but I live by myself. And as much as I love my kitty, it is very comforting to have a back and forth dialogue of one kind or another with you every morning. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, more comments from Candace. Um, buy me as many coffees as you want. Um, I will share the link again. <laughs> um, Christy tells us that there's a lot of walking, biking, and riding, um, and uh, that she is on the peninsula where it is more conducive to being outside. This makes a lot of sense for those folks that are fortunate to live close to nature and we certainly have that here in Puerto Vallarta. It's a lot less complicated. But the comment that we hear regarding being mindful of the people around us, it is it is absolutely wise advice. Um, if I go out walking, I choose to go out walking alone. I can choose to go out walking with a friend. And, you know, an interesting, silly way to go about this, if it makes you feel better, is cut a piece of string that is a meter and a half long, two meters, six feet, whatever, whatever distance helps you, cut a piece of string and hold it with someone that you're walking with. This serves you both as a reminder that you're looking after one another and that you are looking after people that are around you. So this is this is what we found. It, I certainly, the homework gave me a lot of peace of mind. Um, it's going to help me start doing some exercise, which I desperately need. I will share with you all the links that we looked at today. And um, I will continue to explore uh, some of these interesting topics. Some of the things that I'm looking at for this week is, is the whole issue of intimacy. What's going on with coronavirus and sex? Uh, Anthony Fauci has responded very direct questions about, you know, what if you're hooking up in the in the apps? What if you're hooking up on Tinder? Tinder, Tinder, it's called. Um, wh what can you do? Is it okay? Is it not okay? Is it acceptable? Not acceptable? Um, then we're looking at. Uh, then I'm also looking at the politics of COVID-19 in Mexico. So far, I've been reporting about all the health-related issues. But if you wanted to know about what the coronavirus is doing to Mexico politically, it's just as fascinating, interesting, and catastrophic as what we read um, about what's going on north of our border with uh, President Donald Trump and, and the, the business people that want to reactivate the economy versus the health professionals. I mean, Mexico's saga is just as funny, and it has a Mexican twist, um, which uh, I will be happy to share with you as we move forward. But it is Sunday and I've been with you for half an hour. I don't want to take more of your time. Um, Candace suggests I bring my camera. I'm going to be honest with you, Candace. I always want to post photos, but isn't it sad? Isn't it sad that there are people in our community that the moment somebody posts a photo of something wonderful outside, there are those that say, oh, it's beautiful. And then there are those that simply say, stay indoors. And I find that really, it's, it's, it's challenging. You know, it's challenging because, well, I want to keep my opinions to myself. You know, we all handle fear and uncertainty in different ways. Um, and, but I feel fairly confident that I can share some good photos here in this channel with you. And, um, if you don't like my photos, well, I'll try to take better photos next time. Um, speaking of next time, I think it's time to go. I'm going to go have fun. I'm going to go have fun. It's Sunday. I'm going to go find this Corona movie. I'm going to watch it. Um, maybe I don't do horror movies, but hey, maybe I'll take an exception with this one. But I will live. I will leave the link to the trailer, to the preview for the movie. And... Um, and please watch it because it's it's so catastrophically bad, but so catastrophically funny. It's not even funny. So have a great Sunday. It's so great to see you. And I will see you again tomorrow, hopefully. Um, 
Aside from buying a coffee, the best way you can help me is by telling friends. Tell people about the show, share the link with others, and um, keep giving me feedback, keep giving me ideas, photos to share, news to share. It is always, always appreciated. Have a great Sunday, and I'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.